Um, you know, we need more time to pressurize the uh, COPVs for flight levels. Um, you know, perhaps fuel. If the engineers just need to look at some of the data, yeah. see how engines are performing or the avionics. Exactly, those checkouts, um, you know, being able to ha have the opportunity to top off the fuel or locks if it's not fully loaded. And, you know, we might want to just take a few more minutes for that. So that T minus 40 second hold can be really helpful, um, but, uh, you know, we don't have that option on Falcon. So it's uh, a little bit different here. We're just inside T minus two minutes and counting. The good news right now we're hearing it doesn't look like we're gonna need to hold at T minus 40 seconds as the boats are clearing out of the way. Next event coming up, TVC wiggles as we move the center engines on the first stage. You can see maybe just a little bit there. 90 seconds, wiggles are underway as we're checking out the first stage. TVC checks are complete. Next major event we're going to hear, hopefully, is the flight director go for launch at T minus 30 seconds. As we're coming up on T minus one minute, when we get to T minus 40 seconds, we'll just listen in. Last time, as you recall, we did hold at 40 seconds, but it took a few seconds for the clock to recover. So we're going to watch that. And as we press the T zero, we're going to watch and listen the second test flight of Starship. Just like Shiva said, we can restart that clock, and there it is. And there it goes. Clock is rolling. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We are T plus 40 seconds into the flight of Starship. 33 Raptor engines powering the first stage. Power and telemetry nominal. We've heard power and telemetry nominal call out. We're heading downrange over the Gulf of Mexico. That call out tells us Starship is through the period of greatest stress on the way to space. Now the next major event is hot staging in just over 90 seconds from now. To get ready, the booster will shut down all but three of the Raptor engines. Clamps holding the two stages together will release and the Starship second stage will ignite its engines. Starship will then separate from the super heavy booster and head to space. And at the same time, the three engines that are still firing on Super Heavy will flip the booster around. Ten more engines will ignite for the boost back burn, putting the first stage on path for a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico.
Engine power continues to look nominal on 33 Raptor engines. We're about to shut down the first stage and perform staging. Let's watch and listen. And acquisition of Houston Signal, Houston, and New Orleans. Booster engine cut off. Stage separation. Boost back shot up. Incredible views of our Super Heavy Booster. And as you can see, the Super Heavy Booster has just experienced a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. However, our ship is still underway with ship all avionics, six. Power and telemetry nominal. And we just heard there, Ship Avionics, Power and Telemetry nominal. All six engines are lit, as you can see from the GUI there at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Now, we did know that the uh, <laughs> that hot staging was going to be incredibly dynamic. We knew that there was a chance that the booster would not survive, but we're going to take that data and figure out how we can make the booster better for the next hot stage. Yeah, that hot staging put a lot of load on the top of the booster, and of course it flipped around there, a lot of dynamic stuff happening. But ship is still going strong. And it's doing great. Right now, the ship, the second stage, is uh, on its way. Uh, like we said, you can see all six of its engines are ignited. The next major milestone for the ship uh, will be the shutdown of those engines, or SECO, second engine cutoff, which if you follow our Falcon 9 launches, familiar terminology there. So far, today has been incredibly successful, even with the rud of the Super Heavy booster. This is amazing. Primary objective of the booster today, to get to hot staging, to get ship on its way to orbit. It did that admirably. Yeah, we definitely asked... Starship oh. trajectory nominal. All right, great news there. That trajectory, trajectory for ship is nominal. Signal, Cape Canaveral. Once again, Starship's second stage. It's firing those engines. And as you just heard, everything's looking good. Now for the ship, we uh, wanted it to survive hot staging, which as you can see there by that little dot on your screen, it did. Uh, we also want to uh, basically demonstrate that the successful startup of, that, uh, of those engines, demonstrating controlled ascent, which is what it's doing right now, um, and eventually orbital insertion. Uh, we are hoping to basically send this around the Earth and if it makes it this far, splash down in the Pacific Ocean, um, a couple hundred miles north of Hawaii. Now, if we get that far, like all of that sounds great. Secondary objectives for ship, again, continuing to gather engine data and about its health, performance. Not all um, ship chamber pressures. Great news there. That tells us that the chamber pressures inside of the Starship, again, that's that small dot on your screen. The Basically, the propellant um, pressures in the ship are looking good. Yeah, the bottom right corner of your screen, you can see uh, essentially a, a user interface showing us which engines are lit. So the three center sea level Raptor engines on ship are gimbling engines. The three outer engines in the triangle, the larger ones are Raptor vacuum engines. All of them continuing to file fire nominally, so they're at the pressures that we expect to try to get uh, into our target trajectory today. Yeah. And we're not targeting orbit today. We're targeting almost orbit today. Um, that's very intentional as part of the mission design. The goal is to get to a thrust profile similar to what we would need for orbit, but also and to get to the energy signal. levels that the ship would need to dissipate for re-entry. And so we're actually going in a suborbital trajectory today, but 
that trajectory will get us to the energy levels that we need at re-entry, where we can really stress that heat shield and get valuable data on re-entry. And those calls that we are still on a nominal trajectory here and seeing nominal pressures means that we have a really good shot of hitting our target orbit. Yeah. Now, if the booster had survived, uh, we would be uh, around the time where it would be uh, getting ready to land, performing its uh, re-entry, but it unfortunately did not survive. Uh, that being said, that's okay. It survived several Here seconds after uh, hot staging, so we're going to take that data and improve the hot staging sequence and, and probably improve the hardware itself uh, for the next flight. are standing by for a call out here. Coming up on the projected time that ship would shut down its engines. As you can tell by the excitement from the crowd here at Mission Control Center in Hawthorne, uh, there's a great view of our Star Command Center. That's our control center at Starbase, Texas. The crowd here, Mission Control Center, behind us in Hawthorne. Everyone is super exciting. What a successful day this has been so far. And I mean, up to this point, major successful milestones through hot staging, which was the big objective today. So we are going to head into the coast phase uh, planned for the next about hour and five minutes. We'll be returning around the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. And that's while we're waiting for Starship to continue on to its next step for reentry. We're not totally sure what video we're going to get, um, and that video comes normally by overflying ground stations, but we don't have a ton along our flight path. So fingers crossed that we will get some via Starlink on this mission since we're testing that out. And also give us a moment. We are hearing some chatter on the net, so we're going to try to parse that for you.